Hey, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're back for another episode of OTV Live. This is episode cuatro. Can I say it like that? Cuatro? I think uh, so. I think yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, episode four, ladies and gentlemen. We're here tonight. Ah, oh, man, a month in. It's, it feels good. It feels great. It's been quick. Yeah, it's been quick, man. It's Monday, so uh, we're going to talk about what we did over the weekend. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I had, I did a, I, I sang at a wedding over this weekend for one of the, one of the band members I know. It wasn't a, a an official gig, but they they brought me on to sing a few songs. And um, damn, I said it was a really good time. The band was killing um i got to sing a few records along with the band and you know they offered me a whole bunch of alcohol but i don't like to to drink when i sing but it was good it was a great time does that I, happen a lot when, when you go to these weddings well i can't i mean you know when i do corporate weddings or I do corporate gigs then you're not really allowed to drink on the job right you know what I mean? They don't want they don't want some sloppy singer climbing to the moon. <laughs> Let me lay across the skies. Frank, Frank was was uh, pretty sauced up when he drank though, was. <laughs> but when you're a crooner, it's different. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I guess it's just like they allow you just you're, to you're go ahead and do not that. You're also Frank Sinatra. Hell no. <laughs> if I was, I wouldn't be sitting here with you. <laughs> just letting you know that right now. I understand. Yes. Rest in peace, Frank. But um, got to do some shows, uh, hung out with some good people. I, I had a great time. Um, oh, the, this afternoon, I got to go back to my old high school and talk to the music group. They have a music group. Uh, shout out to Saunders High School, all the staff there. Shout out to my boy, you know, Freddie Bartley. Yo, listen, I'm going to have to put you in your place over here. Our intern... <laughs> Our intern Aaron, shout the, out to Aaron. yeah yeah shout out no no the, 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 let's not shout oh, no, out the, okay, let's sorry. not shout out to Aaron he's like boo <laughs> because he's from Lincoln High School you have the sound effects over there yeah Good yeah boo. no 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 it's all right it's <laughs> you know what we're gonna give him the we're gonna give him the ultimate right now we're gonna give it to you right now what why you yo my my dude why are you hating on yo listen we we gonna let you do the, the, the you're wrong brother Saunders all day. That's right. Saunders all day. We ain't doing that, man. For real, man. So, uh, my good friend, uh, Freddie Bartley. Uh, Freddie and I used to sing. Well, we actually sing in a group now together. We were in a group when we were in high school, like a Boys to Men, Jodeci type group. And after uh, Miss Turner, who was the head of the music department, she passed away. He took over. Not Tina. Nah, not Tina. No. Nah. She didn't get smacked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to be real for him today. Uh, <laughs> after she passed away, um, uh, Freddie took the reins and headed up the uh, music department. So the music group. So every Monday and Friday, they get together. So I was nice enough that I donated a couple of hours of my time. And we did some karaoke over there for the kids. And okay. we're gonna. Uh, I'm going to try to put together... A, showcase for them because uh they had a big fire somebody set fire to the school uh earlier this year now it wasn't that same crackhead down in atlanta who nah oh, bro. Okay, just... no 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 they had do we even... listen whoever is, is is effing around with with the yonka schools please stop because they're going to end up catching you and you're going to catch the worst beat down of your life now first <laughs> that's before the cops get you the, yeah pretty much uh First, they had a robbery inside of the school where they stole all the kids' brand new computers oh, out of the school. So they wiped out the whole computer room. And then, you know, some a hole goes and sets fire to the front office of the school. Mm. So the school had to shut down for, you know, you know, for about a week before they can get back up and running. So, you know, these kids had a, a show that they had all planned and put together. And a week before they were supposed to put on the show, somebody, you know, set the school on fire. Like well, I hope I hope they they catch him when they drag him by his toenails. But you know, we're gonna get we're gonna get it going. We're gonna get it going. So it's a good idea. So, yeah, there we go. <laughs> you like that one, right? I did. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's another episode of OTV Live, and um, you know what? We're gonna introduce our guest right now. 
uh, because I want him to, you know, talk about these uh, top 10 independent albums. Uh, he is a multi-talented independent artist himself. He is a painter. He is a sculptor. He is a mixologist. He is a musician as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Guzo. Hey. That's it. <laughs> Just <laughs> Guzo. How you doing? I'm Guzo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, Guzo, what's up, man? Uh, you know, tell the people what is it that you do, being an independent creative such as yourself, you know. I like to paint. Um, I like to paint women. I like to <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Paint women as in you want to paint them as a picture or you want to put paint on them? There's a <laughs> sure, paint, put paint on them too. It's <laughs> almost like a tongue twister. Whatever, whatever you want to do, paint on them, paint around them, doesn't paint matter. them. Doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Guzo does it all, ladies and gentlemen. Guzo does it all. So, uh, yo, we had a funny. Uh, tell them about how we met, cause it, like it's so crazy. We met in the strangest of circumstances, man. So you were working down at uh, Boss Tweets. Working at Boss Tweets. Yeah. Um, it was a quiet night. You came out of nowhere. You were wearing a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> you were upset. For, because... First of all, how many people walk in? in Yo, in, I mean, walk... Boss Tweeds with a with a tuxedo. So wait, I mean, wait, wait. wait. The for the for the audience, for the audience, Boss Tweeds. I don't even know if they're open or not, but they're Boss Tweeds. Okay, so yeah. Boss Tweeds uh, is a it's a dive bar. Yeah. It's a dive bar down on Lower East Side of Manhattan, uh, right next to the what the NR the Q train was it? Then yes, on? the Delancey. Yeah. yeah, Delancey. Uh, so, um, a mutual friend of ours named Blue. He was the he was the manager down there, and um, I got I had did a wedding, and I got I, I showed up at the place I was supposed to DJ, with the tuxedo on. I'm sweating. I just got off stage. I bought in my equipment. They were like, "Oh, dude, nobody called you. We don't need you tonight." And I I was tight, bro. Yeah. So, you know, I said, I knew that Blue was going to be down at Boss Tweeds. So I put the equipment in the car. I drove down to the OE side. I get there. Everything's all there. I said, you know what? I'm just going to set up and play. For at free. Boss Tweeds. Yeah, for free. Why not? I it's said, I'm pissed out. off. I, I want to DJ, and I just want to get on. So I walk in, and I see this young strapping lad behind the bar. <laughs> And I'm just like, young. <laughs> I'm like, yo, dude. I'm like, yo, dude. I just want to play. I just want to play. Yeah. Like, I got cut. I don't even care if I get paid. I, I just want to get behind the turntables and let off some steam. And he was like, pouring drinks. He's like, <laughs> sure, do it. Man. Dude, just <laughs> do it, man. Do it, man. <laughs> And that's and that's how I met. It turned out to be the greatest night ever. Yeah, and man, it was. Got it everybody was popping. Dancing. The rest is history. Yeah, man, it's it's all there. So, uh, we're gonna get into the top ten independent albums in the country in, in the country tonight. Uh, it's much different than last week, bro. Oh, is it? Yeah, definitely much different than last week. Uh. Uh, so many people got knocked off the uh, the charts. I'm, I, I'm taking a quick look here, and it, it almost looks completely different. It is completely different. It, it's uh, it's it's mind boggling to me that the, the the chart changes up weekly from week to week. So if you tuned in last week, um, we had a bunch of you had a bunch of you had a couple of a couple of the joints that was that were that were different. Um, this week, pretty much, there's only about two or three, not even. I, I see someone who's who's not there. I won't, I won't say the name. I'm a little disappointed. Oh, okay. Well, well, yeah, because he was two weeks. He was, yeah, he was no, there. No, every three week. weeks. I think he was every week of the show. Yeah, three, yeah, yeah, every week. But he's not there. Okay. But we'll mention him though. Okay. We'll Honorable mention. Him. Mention. All right. We'll give. <laughs> I don't even. Uh, in fact, do I have everything? I don't even think he's top. I don't think he's top twenty. Really? I'm looking, yeah, yeah. No, he dropped down to 22. No, he took a break. He took a break. It's all right. He's good. All right. So, <clears throat> let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, the top 10 independent albums this week. April the 3rd. Yeah, April 3rd. All right. Number 10 is uh, Jason Aldean. 
and his album is called They Don't Know. If you don't know who Jason Aldean is, I don't know what to say to you. He's like one of the biggest country stars. I, I don't know who he is. You never heard of Jason never Aldean? Heard of him. Never heard of him. Guzo, you I heard? Have no idea. What the? F- are you serious? <laughs> Dude, you gotta understand. Like you are. I kind of have. Well, I don't have an excuse. I should know better. But like you know all kind. You're a singer. Like you. What that? Do wait, wait, this. wait. Hold on, hold on. You hold on. do this. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I am a singer, but at the same time, I I love music. I know a bunch of singers that don't know half of these people. I know. I was trying. I was trying to give you a lot of credit. I don't oh, well, shit. I, you should know who these people are. And damn it, if you don't know who they are, you know, the reason why I do this every week, to be honest with you, is because I'm tired of people coming to me saying, oh, everything on the radio or everything they hear is just trash. Right. And I'm like, okay, so do you go on, do you go on billboard.com? Do you go on Spotify? Do you go on Tidal? Do you go on the streaming services and click what's new this week? Do you actually sit there and go, uh, who's the top independent artist? No, you don't. Because all I hear is a bunch of bitching and moaning about, oh, this is trash. I can't listen to this. They don't play this. They, they're not going to play it for you. The record company is a small globule now. You only have, what, three major record companies now? That's it. Universal, Warner Brothers, and uh, Sony. So every every record label you hear is only under those big three, and that's it. So, you know, take the time out. Go do some research. The reasons why that we don't play any music from these indie artists is because that's what we want you to do. We're bringing it to your attention. Go log on. Go do some kind of, you know, investigating. I know it might be, oh, God, I have to go log on and go look for a song. I'll be honest. I do do that uh, for research for, for my own show and, and just for my own well-being. No, I know you do that. But but when I look, well, I'll be honest, but when I see a cover of a dude with a big cowboy hat on, I do, I do skip it. Oh, <laughs> Typically. Shout out to all my country lovers. Depends on my... the hat. I guess. Hat. I guess. <laughs> But wait a second. I'll, no, I'll, give it, I'll give it like one track list. Wait, wait. Two to... two weeks ago, we had it was a a, a country hip hop band, and you look su- no, 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 but you look surprised though. You were like, their country hip hop band, and you was just like, oh, all right. And I thought you were gonna have eh, whatever. I haven't. All right. So number I forgot, I forgot their names already. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> baptized in bourbon. That was the name oh, of the that's album. That's right. That's right. All right. Jesus. I'll go back. All right. All right. Next no. show. All right, no. Come on, Gypsy. Are you serious, bro? Yeah, man, I'm dead serious. What's number nine? Damn the number nine. Are you really gonna go to like? What? Congratulations, Baptist? you played yourself. How did no. I play myself? No. That's on you, bro. <laughs> Why? Because I didn't listen to 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 baptized in bourbon juice. Baptized in bourbon. You gonna bring up? Don't a, drink my. <laughs> you're gonna bring up that your homeboy had a a mixtape called Baptized in Piss. Is better than baptizing per- bourbon, I'll tell you that. Well, apparently Makes not. A good movie it's, title. I'm telling you. It's one of the greatest hip hop albums, underground hip hop albums of all time. <laughs> Number nine, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, the album is called The Great Collapse by Fit for an Autopsy. Mm. So, now, they are harder than hard, these guys. <laughs> Yo, my dude, but. Dude. <laughs> They're amazing musicians, though. <laughs> That's what they sound like. Amazing musicians. No, I'm sure they are. Nah. Honestly, I give I give the highest. I think some of the greatest drummers of all times are drummers that play for metal bands, like oh, hardcore yeah. screaming metal bands that are. I don't even know what the the BPMs are. It seems like it's 250 BPMs. That they're Yo, they be now. going they're crazy. Going, and to do it, a to do an entire song, but to do an entire concert, that's unreal. That's just. Unreal. You got to be fit for that. Yeah. Yeah, in you definitely. Ways. Yeah, you yeah. definitely got to be fit for that, man. Um, yeah, man, I checked them out. Um, yeah, fit for fit for an autopsy. The Great Collapse is the whole album, but they're very hardcore metal guys. But check them out. Okay. Number eight, um, it's uh, the album's called "You're Not as Blank as You Think," and the the band is called Soror- Sorority Noise. Um, Sorority Noise is like a, a indie. I guess that it. Indie like electronic band, but they were real. 
I love their music. Sounds like LMAFO. Not LMAFO. What was that? Uh, MGMT? No, I was, I was going to go worse. Uh, doesn't even matter. Jeez. They had that one pop song on MTV. They were like surfer boys. Nah, nah, nah. These are not. Uh, yeah. They they have some great they have some great music, uh, great music. I like them. Uh, Obituary and their album is called Obituary. Another hardcore metal band. I actually did listen to this on title. What Obituary? I, I did listen to Obituary, and also I listened to uh, Mastodon's new album. Oh, Mastodon's album is dope. Yo, oh, that album. I was like, let me just give it a shot. Yo, dude, dude, Mastodon. Bro. Have you 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 have you listened to Master? I, I respect both bands, but I'm a I'm a sucker for uh, Obituary. I really think. Are you? Yeah, okay. right. yeah, and this is the, I think this is an EP. I don't think this is a full album. I okay. think it's just like a self titled EP, and they're number seven on the charts. Good for them. Um, uh, number six is uh, uh, Real Estate. The band is called Real Estate, and the album's called In Mind. Um, Real Estate. I, I don't know how to. It was I remember name. Yeah, I was just going to say I, I did listen to it uh, on title, but it wasn't, uh, it didn't grab me enough for me to even remember. Uh, Real Estate has a really weird video. Okay. Like it's, con- it, it's, it, it's, the drummer gets switched out mid song. <laughs> like there's one dude on the kit and then all of a sudden they pan away yeah. and it's like a totally different dude behind there. <laughs> Then all of a sudden a horse pops up in the middle of the video and I was just like, and the horse is like, <laughs> I was like, okay, but the song is so infectious, man. Okay. The song was like, I was like, I listened to it like five times. It was really weird, but um, go check them out. Now, number four, this has got to be the weird. Okay. The album is called yours conditionally and the band is called Tennis. <laughs> now, the band is like this 1970s slash 1980s. Real quick, let me cut you off. I think you yeah. missed five. Did I miss five? You oh, miss oh, five. oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Number five. Hold on. Number five. The Flash. Music from the special episode duet. So The Flash had a crossover episode with Supergirl. Okay. So both of them are singers. Oh, okay. In real, in real life. life. Oh, wow. Both of them are singers, the, the Grant Gustin and I forgot the, the girl's name that plays Supergirl. Okay. But they, I think they both came from Glee. They were both on Glee. Gotcha. Um, so everybody, just about everybody in the cast mm-hmm. sings. Right. So uh, the Flash's stepfather was in Rent. He was the one from uh, Law & Order. Okay. He was on Law & Order for many years. Um, the guy that plays Cisco Ramon on the show, excellent Broadway singer. Mm-hmm. And a bunch of the other people from Supergirl and from The Flash, they all been either off-Broadway or on-Broadway. Mm-hmm. Dude, this episode was so good. They brought in the choreographer from, oh, man, was it Spirited Away? What, it was one of the choreographers from one of the, uh, the, the shows downtown. Hamilton? No, no, no. They can't afford him. <laughs> I was going to say. They can't afford Hamilton. that. <laughs> I don't... Yeah. But the episode was great. So if you got a chance, first check out the episode and then check out the songs. It's pretty much all. Was it a good episode, too? Oh, man. The episode was great. Right, I, 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 you know, it wasn't like cop rock or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, they yeah. just burst in the song. Cop like they, rock. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> you said cop rock. Cop rock. I did like cop rock. <laughs> did you? What? Now that was weird. Hey, was you like co- yo, rock? dude? Is, is, yo, they got arrested, and the guy is sitting there. He's guilty. <laughs> He's guilty. Like it was crazy, man. You like Cop Rock? I like uh, uh, the Last, Last Dragon. Dragon. Man, yeah. get out of here, man. You can't. <laughs> Dude, Sorry, there was like, I, I think Cop Rock was on for like four episodes, <laughs> and they was just like, "This is too, <laughs> this is too, this is too fucking Broadway." <laughs> like, yo, I know some exec was like, "Yo, this shit is too, nah, bro." Right. I mean, this they sh- sang when somebody was getting busted. You know. Yeah, I mean? like you got crack rocks, right. crack rocks, like <laughs> crack rocks in your pocket. <laughs> You got Heron in your ass. Right. Like, it was. Right. <laughs> I was going to try and do it, but I just forgot. He's guilty. 
<laughs> All right. Anyway, let's go to number four. Number Your, four. Yours conditionally by Tennis. Now, this band is like an homage to like 1970s, 1980s, like electro pop. Disco? No, no. I'm talking, <laughs> I'm talking, I'm talking like in excess. Oh, okay. Like, but they they dress and look like they're from like a 1970s, like, like she has the the the, the perm, the and curly perm, the curly fro, the perm. curly abba, yeah, yeah, like very seventies, eighties. Okay, and the and their first video is so f- fucking weird. Is it like <laughs> like, like she's like like she's standing there and she's just like <laughs> <laughs> like looking at the camera awkwardly and right. then start singing. Oh, uh, I, I I I came this close. <laughs> This close to bring it to, to giving you a clip, and I was like, "But that's not what we do here." No, we don't do. But that. listen, log on, go on YouTube and put in tennis, and just put in yours conditionally, and the first single will pop up. And yo, I was laughing my face off, yo, my face. There it is. In the morning, I'll be better. Oh my god, yo, I mean sparkly shirts. Jew froze. It was crazy. Oh, this is a, she looks like uh, what's her name from Ferris Bueller? Right. Yeah. She, Jennifer. No, not Jennifer Gray. Was it Jennifer Gray? Jennifer Gray. It yeah, is Jennifer yeah, Gray. yeah. Look, look, look at this. Do you see this? Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just give the people that. <laughs> Yo. It's a little Napoleon Dynamite esque. Yes, kind of, but just very off kilter. Right. It was just, oh man, I'm into it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved this. And then yeah, number five. So the next group is um, uh, KXM, uh, and their album is called Scatterbrain. Mm. That's number three. Now KXM is uh, their hard rock band. They came together in 2013. Now it's the Corn Drummer. And the, uh, the Ray uh, Lu- Luzier, uh, King X, which is uh, King's X, the bassist Doug Pinnock, and uh, Lynch Mob, and the, the the guitarist, the guitarist from Lynch Mob, and he was also in Dokken. Okay. Uh, George Lynch, he sings. So it's all it's K is for Corn, X is for King's X, and then M is for uh, Lynch Mob. Okay. So those are it's like a super group. I like so it. yeah. But that, yo. How's the album? Uh, dude. It's it's like when I saw the first video and then I listened to the rest of the album mm-hmm. on title, I was like, holy shit. Like, you can't. They have so much talent between the three of them and so much. Like, they could go from real hard rock to real heavy metal to back again because they have so many years of experience. Like one song. Yeah. Not only that, the whole album is, wow. is dope. It, it's just like, well, you know, Corn has been out since what, 99? Well, before that, 90, uh, yeah, they not, were, 97, 98, something say, like yeah, that? 97, 98, yeah. Dude, yeah. he's so good on the drums. Yeah. He's, he's ridiculous. All right, so uh, next one is uh, two is Hot Thoughts. The album's called Hot Thoughts by Spoon. And I, I, I've heard of Spoon. Have you ever heard of Spoon? I have not. Oh, okay. I heard well, of Spoon. Yeah, Spoon is Spoon is dope. I mean, it's not, you know, I wouldn't run out to buy the album. I mean, it's not my cup of tea, but they've been together for, a, you know, they've been together since like 93. You know, Spoon. Oh, that's almost 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, more than 20. More than tennis. More than 20. More than tennis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, they're from Austin, Texas. They're indie rock, indie pop. They're, they're number two this week. And of course, for the, the the like fourth week in a row, number one independent album in the country is "Hardwired to Self Destruct" by Metallica. I'm starting to not like these guys. No, I'm, just I'm yo, I, <laughs> dude. At the end of the day, this is just what it is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, you know. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I, listen, I would do the same thing if I was them. I'm, yeah, they're, they're independent now, so they just go ahead. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hey, it is what it is, bro. It is what Each it is. Each one of them has enough money to have their own marketing budget of any other of these bands. You know what I mean? Like, they're, yeah. they're worth so much money. In, but, you know, put it together. I mean, they can just flood the independent market, which is good for I mean, it's not like they don't put out good music. So, 
It's not a bad thing. Yeah. Hey, good for them. Yeah, you know? exactly. Good, good for, for them. them. Good for them. Yeah. I want a new number one, though. <laughs> I mean, yo, seriously, all jokes aside, I'm just like, what, what the, I was just like, what the hell? How many records? Are, do we have any, any stats? Do we know how many records are somewhere? I don't know. Okay. They probably up to. They probably they gotta be up to about like three hundred, four hundred thousand sure. copies by now. I'm sure. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure. All right, who we got in the chat room tonight? Uh, oh, it's got to be one of Guzo's people, Jack, Jack, uh, Lauer, Lure. Yeah. Uh, he say what's up? How? Oh, yeah, of course. That's How, Jack? Ep- yeah, man. Uh, Naya Barnes is in it. This ep- that episode was epic. This must be talking about our episode that we had before this. Must be. Yeah, man. Mm. So, all right. So, getting with uh, into Guzo. Guzo is a painter. He's a sculptor. Um, let's pull up a couple of uh, his pieces sure. while we talk to this gentleman. You know what I'm saying? Um, Guzo, can you just uh, tell us, take us back from the beginning. Where were you born? Where you grew up? Because <laughs> you got such a, uh, a great... You know what I'm saying? Story. Great. No one's ever said that before, but thanks. Uh, <laughs> um, I was born in Italy. I, uh, I bounced around all my life between uh, Toronto and uh, New York City, and um, permanently in New York now. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I love Toronto, but. Uh, we New got York a couple of sketches up, actually. Yes. Yeah, That's actually yeah. uh, The Wolf Mother. Uh, it's part of a series, the one you're looking at now. It was in my last show. Um, at the art as pain gallery, mm-hmm. uh, the Ukrainian cross. Um, that was actually a private commission for someone. It was never really in the show, but this one you're looking at now is, was in the last show. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going to go through a couple of them. We got a little bit of a delay. Um, this one that you see now with the, with the lips, man, you have a very, a very like distinct style. Thank you. And, and I, I'm, I'm digging it, man. A lot of it's based on uh, dreams. Okay. And um, I feel like I can connect some way with them um, if I get it out of my mind because mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go insane if it stays in, of course. And uh, I've had uh, several encounters, close experiences with uh, uh, sleep paralysis. And uh, and it's a crazy state to be in if you've yeah. ever experienced that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, you know you basically you wake up from it when you snap out of it you're asking yourself no but I, I'm convinced you know you're because mm-hmm. you felt all your senses were in touch with sound uh, taste you know feeling all of that it, it just it was very vivid so okay but it's not it's not there yeah <laughs> so sleep paralysis for some people that don't know is when your mind is awake but your body is it's not awake. Yeah, right? half of your mu- half of your body, your mind is awake, and the other half isn't. Um, what you're looking at now is uh, my latest um, endeavor, and uh, I'm working more into that uh, for um, the show coming up in a few days. And and oh, you have a show coming up? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to be part of the uh, pancakes and booze. Uh, Art fair, you guys really have to come. Pan- wait, cakes. when and where? Wait, wait, pancakes and booze? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah. just listen. <laughs> that I might have the to, bourbon, <laughs> brother. I might have to detox it's the next two day. Days. Be. It's been on tour across the country, and it's getting a lot of um, good vibe. There's going to be like you know naked body painters and all that. Oh, um, count me in. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's Wednesday. Toilet. It's Wednesday night and uh, Thursday uh, at uh, M1 Five Lounge. <laughs> So, okay, so is that is down in Manhattan or yeah yeah in Tribeca area? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So Tribeca. All right, man. Sound like you winning, man? You winning? <laughs> Guzo out here winning, baby. How, how long have you been painting, uh, Guzo? I I tell people I, I was born with a guitar in one hand and a paintbrush in the other. Nice. Uh, this is a sneak. The one you just saw right there. That's a sneak peek of uh, definitely going to be at the show. That piece. It's my latest latest stuff. Um, okay. Yeah, that See, one. I wish I knew more about art. Like, I can just look at pictures like this and be like, this guy's good. But I can't look at artwork and say, oh, he was definitely inspired by this artist and this piece is from, you know, inspired by this, this uh, uh, decade and stuff like that. Do, do, you, do you have, are you a student of, of art in a sense of, you know, you know, the different contemporary pieces and this artist and that artist? Or are you just a pure muse or, or, or in the sense of where you just purely create? 
Great question. Um, in the past, definitely at some point, you know, you start off as being a student of all the greats, of course. And then um, once you discover all that, you got to like throw it out, you know, like break the rules. And to me, I get turned on um, by everybody in New York City. Everybody freaking inspire, inspires me. And uh, I mean, there's just so much talent and it's at your fingertips now because because of social media and all that. And uh, that's really where it's at. That's the modern thing. I, uh, you know, the past is the past and uh, everything's been done and it's up to you to how to make up a new spice because now you have access to everything and it's up to you to whether what you do with it. Um, so that's just, yeah, that was a great question. I hope I, I answered yeah, that. Yeah, no, right. no, you got it, man. Yeah. Got, so, some, some of your artwork reminds me the one that I'm put, putting up on the screen right now. kind of reminds me of in, in Batman with uh, Michael Keaton. and uh, Okay. So, and, uh, so he's giving Jack you... Jack Nicholas. Jack Nicholson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jack, yeah. yeah. He's giving you... Uh, uh, giving you... What's the, what's the, the director's name? Um, Tim Burton. Giving you like a Tim Burton type yeah. vibe? There, there's a beautiful, beautiful horror element to it. Um, Somebody said that before. It's um, scary, beautiful, or, or beautiful, scary, or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So tell me, take me, um, tell me about you growing up in another, because I, I feel like that you growing up in another country gave you a different outlook on things, Definitely. especially when it comes to your art. Definitely, and it's I applied it to, um, you know, to whatever it, I'm into now, and I mean I come from a classic Italian um, Roman Catholic family. Oh, okay. So and what did mommy do? It's just creepy shit. Good food but creepy stuff, man. Like, uh, you know, the whole religion in itself. You know? So, I mean, when growing up, I mean, when did you move here to America? I, I bounced uh, around on and off at various points in my life, ages, every okay. from, from um, early childhood to, um, you know, adolescence. And, uh, and then, you know, you, you realize after college, after certain um points in your life where you want to be at and okay I, and i just like figure i can't live without being in new york city okay got you yeah. so so growing up back then did you see a lot of the cathedrals and the angels and the uh, yeah i was born in a in a classic italian medieval town that's over a thousand years old and it's wow. and it's exactly that it's like the real uh Game of Thrones, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? The and real Game of Thrones. I, um, where I come from, from the south of Italy, it's, it's a place where it's been raped by everybody in the Mediterranean. So there's so much, it's so rich. Yeah, in, with culture yeah. And, 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 and different you know, architecture I, and things of that nature. Yeah, I didn't stand a chance. I was born right into it, you know, like I really right. was. And, and just as a kid, I was, you know, already turning stuff into art or what I thought right. was art or whatever, you know? So what, I, what did your mom do? What did your dad do? Like... Uh, my my dad, uh, he's like a Armani. He's like a, he still works. He's still like a, he's a classic Italian tailor. Really? My mom should have been a chef, but she didn't. Okay. And uh, just, uh, you know, an Italian mom with a simple job, you know. And uh, yeah, and I can see how that molded you. Like, dad is out there, you know, tailoring yeah. and yeah, yeah, he's he's great, you know. He, and that's uh, an art form all in, yeah. in and of itself. Yeah. To look at someone's, you know, whole body and say this cut is going to work for you that cut you know what i mean i mean it, it it's kind of hand in hand with the art world because you, you have to style sure, into yeah. yeah oh okay cool all right so how did you end up being uh the, you know what I'm saying the the you always your your aura like when i met you your aura I think I met your aura before I met you. <laughs> like seriously, it's like he, that, he does have that very yo, kind he, of. Uh, nah, he had this halo around him, bro. Because yeah. I walked into the bar Dude, and he was just like, "Oh, <laughs> hi." I don't know. Maybe I'm, I... Gu I'm Guzo, and I was like, "Okay, right, <laughs> like, <laughs> winning." Your check's in the mail, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but seriously, man, it's like I felt that I, I felt your your Thank positive you. vibes Thank and your you. energy came off. Like, before I even shook your hand, I was like, yo, this is a good guy. This is yeah. a good dude. Thank you. You know what I mean? Um, how does that, you know, my question would be, how does that translate? Well, because I know a lot of artists out there, sculptors, painters, they, they, they kind of, you never, you never come off to me like, cocky brash you know how do you balance being you know a real artist you know what i mean without being 
Most of them, I, I, I know they have I have this. a little secret. Um, okay. I, once a month, I, I turn into a werewolf. Okay. <laughs> and I go, I like Anthony Hopkins in The Wolfman. He goes and ch chains himself up in some deep cave somewhere so he doesn't hurt anyone. But, uh, no, I have my moments, but I'm lucky. I, I, I take it out through art and yeah. music. I mean, uh, there's... Staying humble. There's, you, you've always seemed like I a... I mean, I break down, too, of course. I'm human. and uh, But for the most well, part... Most days you're human. <laughs> most days, yeah. I mean, like, if I, you know, I've... At some point in my life where I, I wasn't good and someone calls you out on it, you yeah. know, and mirrors, you know, what happened, what you did, and, and you're like... You know, you hate yourself for it. So, you know, you, you learn from your mistakes, I guess, whatever. Okay. And All right. What, what, uh, how much uh, do women play a part in your creative All process? of it. <laughs> All of it. Here we go. We didn't open up that can of worms, so, ladies and gentlemen. So, ladies so and gentlemen, <laughs> the views of Standby Gypsy and of Guzzo are then of them and then alone. Not part of Zadalza NY Network. I thought, I thought it was <laughs> here to talk part about of me. <laughs> Women. No, I mean, I, mean I, w I would imagine, you know, you, you being a charismatic fellow, uh, you know, I too met, met uh, Guzzo uh, down at, um, at Boss Tweeds, and he was one of those bartenders immediately you just can have a conversation with. Oh, yeah. You can just start talking to. There's two, pe there's two kinds of people uh, <laughs> in the world that I love having conversations with as far as complete strangers, bartenders and cab drivers. Okay. I, nah, I, I nah. really do it. Yeah, you yeah, got it. Especially when, you, especially when you're outside. Anyway. So, with that being said, I'm sure you've had lots of conversations with women in, in the bar bar setting. Uh, can, can you tell us the, 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 the inspiration that sometimes women may play in, in your artwork? How, how, does it, how does it relate to I, art? I would say a good 95% of it is all <laughs> inspired by women. That ass. I mean, I, I name all my guitars after women. Um, really? Okay, all right. I, I love to paint women. I love to talk to women. I love mm. to learn from women. Um, I love being in the company of women. And it's just something amazing. And uh, uh, I'll say a cheese thing, and I'll say, uh, without them, I'm half the man, you know? So Right. But know, you actually I'll, mean it. You're not being cliched and corny. You, you generally mean stuff like that. I mean, like, what good would I be if it was just all, like, all about me, all about the man? It's just true. No. I mean, um, yeah. Well, I mean, part man and part wolf. <laughs> That's true. Well, it, it, nah, it's a great transition. Like I said, you know, Guzzo is a, you know, an artist, painter, sculptor. He's also <laughs> a musician. What, what kind of music do you produce? Um, uh, on stage, um, I, 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 I love rock, but I, um, I have, um, you know, and when I'm alone, I, I have a, a guilty pleasure of listening to electronic music. Oh, okay. Maybe okay. even country, if it's right, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we have to put them on. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, let me, let me, uh, we're gonna, that's a good transition, because we have, um, we have your band, uh, which is called Where, like a werewolf. Um, th we got a picture of them together. Yes, we do. It's three of them. Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, where and when you start turning into like a, <laughs> a manly beast. Do we need to worry about this right now? Yeah, like. Um, where um, is a, a dirty rock and roll band from New York City. Uh, it's Grace on drums and, um, and Constantine, he's bass and vocals. And um, some magic happened last night. We got back together again in the studio for the first time after uh, we did solo stuff for about a year, and um, and it was just magic. It was like, uh, like we never left, you know, and and it, it was great. And we're excited, mm -hmm. and um, it's the kind of band where it's ongoing. Where we will take another break at some point, but I know that it's forever uh, with them. Yeah, it's one of those. Things. You know what? You're doing it the right way, man. Because, you know what? When you try, when you try to excuse me, when you try to do it, you know, for several years. All the time, you know, not saying that you get tired of people, but all you guys are doing separate things, different things, you know what I'm saying? But when you come back together, it just feels like home, you know what I mean? It's, um, they're, um, they're like the right girlfriend that you just never want to lose. And, um, um, other bands, being in a band could be like having a really, it's, it is a relationship, very much like a marriage. And, uh, um, right. Um, and you got to keep nurturing it, and it doesn't work if only half of the people in the band are doing their part and the other half are not, you know? All right, so we're going to get into one of the joints. 
That's um, a great word. When man. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, when man becomes wolf, <laughs> when man becomes wolf, we're gonna get into that one. We're gonna play. Eh, let's get a minute and a half on it. Let's let's do it, baby. Let's do it. That was where song was called When Man Becomes Wolf. You can check that out on YouTube. Uh, we got the guitarist in the building. His name is Guzo. Ozug. No, I'm just, <laughs> damn Facebook made him have a last name, man. They, they, start, they started up the new year terribly. So Guzo's in the building, ladies and gentlemen. He is uh, uh, every man. He's a musician. Uh, he is a writer. He is a painter. He is a sculptor. He's everything that uh, that this show represents, man. So we want to thank you for coming and being here tonight for sure, man. So tell us about what you got going on now, man. You got the show coming up? I got the show coming up um, in a couple days. What so... was it called? Pancakes and ass? What was it? <laughs> Pancake and titties. Pancake, Pancake and titties and bourbon. Titties. Pancake and titties. <laughs> Dave Chappelle going to be there. It's a, it's a group show um, at the M15 Lounge, okay, uh, 52 cool. Walker Street, Wednesday and Thursday. This Wednesday and Thursday, uh, and it oh, starts at seven. Oh, goes on to about two a.m. Pancakes are free. Whoa! Yeah, free pancakes. Lord have mercy. Damn. But um, <laughs> there's going to be over 150 artists. Um, showing their stuff and uh and like i said it's bouncing around it's going into toronto as well my hometown um and uh chicago oklahoma new orleans all those places pittsburgh okay um so it's gonna be great i i don't know what's gonna happen and i'm excited about that mm. the, uh yeah one of your friends david uh grisella said congrats so oh thanks, thanks dave. dave thank yeah, you yeah man thanks dave you know what I'm saying? Um, so where you guys got back together in the studio? Where is that going to be going? Uh, that's going to be going towards uh, more recordings, live shows, videos, um, before uh, we all uh, split again and do solo stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just definitely going um, heavily into uh, focusing on art, but, I mean, the music's always going to be there for me as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but with where, uh, right now, uh, we wrote a new song, uh, last night and it, and it just really came, um, it was that easy and we, we felt like we found something new and cool and exciting. So, um, we got some stuff in the making. I wish I could snap my fingers and get it all done now, but obviously the key, everything takes time. So, um, that's where it's going. Okay. All right. All right. Get some women involved in the videos too. There you go. <laughs> Pancakes. <laughs> Some pancakes. That should be your next video. It should just be a food fight of pancakes <laughs> and bourbon everywhere. Jeez. That'd make a great painting once you know you just plaster it on the wall. Hell yeah, dude. Got it. All right. It is time for our indubious 
five indie questions with Mr. Guzo here. So we're going to get to those. Can we get the, the sound effects still up? Are we still got those? Uh, they are now. Oh, yeah. There you go. So, ladies and gentlemen, five indie questions with Guzo. One, what does being an independent artist mean to you? It means everything. I don't want to look back uh, when I'm 80 or 70 and say, what if I didn't do this? Um, kind of like that scene in Lost Boys where they're all hanging off the bridge and they're going, what's his name, Michael? They're going, join us, Michael, join us. And he's contemplating whether he wants to dive in and become a vampire. Just do it, man. I don't, like I said, you don't, don't look back when you're 80 or yeah. 90, you know, or even tomorrow and say, come on, just do it. You know? gotcha. It's not like a Nike commercial, but... <laughs> The best, the best cliches are true, though. Yo, seriously, man. Hopefully we can get you a nice little, uh, they can give you a goth sneaker to wear. <laughs> <laughs> a free fucking plug over here. Just goth it. Like some bat wings Just goth sky. it. <laughs> Just goth it. Just kill it. Just kill it. Just kill what? it. <laughs> Just sacrifice it. <laughs> right. Just goth it. Instead of the, so instead cool. of the, uh, the check, you got the, the horns. Yeah, I know, right? It's just like. On the side of the sneaker like this. That's right. That's right. Crazy. <laughs> Yo, listen, man. <laughs> Shit. You know, this, you, before we get to the second question, let me tell you something. Like, I never prided myself as being popular okay. in, in high school. Mm. I mean, people come to me and tell me that I was popular mm. in high school, but I never thought I was. Right. But the only thing that I could do was implant myself mm -hmm. because I loved rock music. Okay. I loved skateboarding. Like, I broke so many. My mother, I think my mother took away my skateboard because I broke so many bones on the thing. <laughs> like, foot. She said, I'm tired of going to the ER. Yo, listen, man. It, 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 our insurance ain't going to cover you breaking all them toes. Right. You know what I'm saying? You only got 10 of them. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I, I, I guess I prided myself in being a part of, you know, I guess the the cool kid culture. Okay. But I also was in like chess club. Okay. Like, I love chess. <laughs> yo, it's like yo, dude, I was in the chess. Like I literally used to sneak off to the chess club. Wow. You didn't want to let anyone know. No, nah, I didn't want anybody to know. But you know what? Shout out to all my people in the chess club back in high school and so on. This, <laughs> I, I, you know what? I, that was a, that was a dick move on my part, mm -hmm. dude. Because I used ashamed. To, you were ashamed. Yo, my dude, I used to carry around a little pouch. Uh huh. You know, but anyway, fanny, listen. Fanny pack. No, nah, no, nah, I had the pouch with all my pieces in it. And I never used to let anybody know what it was. I was, like, embarrassed. They'd be like, where you going? Did you go to chess club? Huh? You fucking nerd. Right. Yeah, Smack like, that point out of your hand. <laughs> but I, I, always, I always prided myself in to be able to put myself in many different cultures. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Whether it was the guys in the back smoking cigarettes playing hacky sack with Jinko jeans on. Right. Or all the, you know, hip-hop heads. You know... I, you know, I was in the 90s, man. It was yeah, all... I hung fun. out with everybody, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I tried to pride myself as being an everyman. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the reasons why, I guess, you know what I'm saying, I gravitated toward your aura, man, because you, you're you everyman. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Um, so back to the questions. Number two, uh, if you had an opportunity to sign to a major record label, would you do so? I would be an idiot if I said no. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and you don't have to expound on it if you don't want to. Yeah, you don't have to defend your position. You don't have to maybe, defend your position. Maybe just for a minute. And okay. Then, uh, All right. And then I would get out of it or uh, use the money um, to help others. That's probably the main reason why I would mm. do it. Um, okay. I don't really care about a Grammy. Um, I hear that shit. But um, if I can like make a difference in some kid's life, or like just somebody, you know, or, or even somebody smokes a joint to my song, that means the world to me. You know, somebody getting high to my music—that's great. I like this. <laughs> 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 All right, number three. Uh, what are your major musical influences? Uh, Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. No, um, Jimmy's up there, but um, okay. I, uh, uh, as far as you mean, like as far as rock guitars go, uh, it, it doesn't matter, man. Musical influence oh, across the board, man. Just, uh, you just rifle off some people, man. So Hall of Famers for me would definitely be Jimi Hendrix. Um, if you want to go into a completely different genre, um, if you want to go into a, like something like uh, 
electronic or um, like I love the Dead Can Dance. I don't know if you ever heard of them. You know, they're very. Okay. Uh, no, I heard of them. I don't think yeah, I've heard the music. They're very world music, you know, with like sitars and stuff like that. And oh, that shit. really, inspir- you know, on, on a good given day, um, like Nick Drake, just him and his guitar, or like big fan of the blues, of course. Who oh, is yeah. It, right? Come on. Um, but I, I do have the four main guitar players who I call my forefathers, and that's Hendrix and Iommi and mm-hmm. uh, Gilmore and Jimmy Page. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. All right, man. I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> you get a thumbs up on that. Yeah, man. All right, so number four. <clears throat> if, you were, if you were offered a deal outside of your passion, outside of the music world, outside of the art world, and, you know, you had everything, well, money-wise, you'd be good, but you would have to leave the music and the art alone. So... Nothing you're saying, nothing related to nothing what related I'm to the arts. About. No, yeah. I can tell you right away. No, I um, I've given up marriages and relationships for that, and you know, I'm definitely not. I'd rather die poor doing what I love doing and um, and not being stuck, you know, miserable in some place where I'm making a shitload of money and um, and just my life sucks. Got you because I want a polo t shirt, you know, no way. <laughs> <laughs> man, don't say I do hate on polo now. <laughs> I know. Polo, I like polo. I love polo, but am you know I, am what? I'm to use those kind of words like nah, the polo nah, nah, and listen. show. Nah, nah, nah. You good, man. You good. I'm just a polo fanatic. Uh, and uh, you know what? Oh, we'll, no. do we'll, we'll, we'll do it after. We'll do it after the five questions. Cause I got something about the polo shit. Um, so number five. Um, number five would be what is your end game? Like, what is your main goal that you want to meet and surpass when it comes to, you know, your art? Basically, just um, after everything I do, like, um, like my last show was pretty successful um, on my own personal level. And and I my first thought was I couldn't wait to hit just go back to the studio and and um, and and outdo myself. I always want to it's the Capricorn in me. I just uh, always want to. Set. I don't believe in limits. I don't um, believe in boundaries. I mm-hmm. just want to see, you know, you take it to the edge of the world and see what happens. Dive in, you know. Um, I love that, man. Ma- make a mark. Um, um, inspire somebody else to be what, you know, something bigger, you know. So that's the point for me. I like it. I'm a fan. I'm definitely a fan. I'm um, getting back to that polo thing, though. <laughs> so every episode I've had uh, some kind of polo on, whether it be shirt. First episode was button up, and then the last two episodes have been polo hoodies. So now I think that Naya, Naya, is she still here? Uh, yeah, I think she's still watching. But shout out to Naya. She was just like, so you're just going to wear polo hoodies every week? <laughs> <laughs> but that's, yo, dude, that's the thing with doing these shows now. You really got to be cognizant of what you wear, yo. how often you wear, what color. Yo. T- dude, what if- two shows ago, you had on a bright red shirt and you matched the matched background. Matched the background. Yeah. And I, I watched the show and I was like, damn, I'm, I look like Grimace <laughs> in the background. Just like, oh, you want a burger? <laughs> like, I'm just coming up. Like- what if I would have just said Lacoste? No, no, no. It's not how it works, Guzo. I mean, nobody heard, right? (laughs) That's what we think about Lacoste. Oh, man. Someone alligators on my shirt. (laughs) I like those alligators. Wait, Lacoste was the alligator. What was the other one? La Tigra? Nah, La Tigra. Oh, La Tigra. Yeah, 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 with the tiger. Yeah, with the tiger. Yeah. Spanish tiger. Jesus Christ. Oh, man. So what's up, guys? What's everybody <laughs> doing, man? We got a little time. We, we do have BS. a little bit of time. Well, what about uh, what's up? Koi? Oh, yeah, let's get to our sponsor tonight. Okay. <laughs> That's a thought. Oh, Jesus. How you doing, ladies and gentlemen? I did not get high before I came here, but I feel like I am. And that's good. Ladies and gentlemen, go to Koi Creative Space.com. 
Go to KoiCreativeSpace.com if you need a place to uh, write a script, you need a place to study for an exam, and, you know, your home is just not you know, conducive. That basement doesn't. Mom's <laughs> coming downstairs. Jesus, man. You know, if you're an intern and you like to jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Aaron. <laughs> Shout out to Aaron. <laughs> Aaron, what are you doing? I'm playing two, 2K. Aaron, come in for dinner. Play with these two nuts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so coy. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful space, you know, Gary. It's a wonderful space. Let's let's put that like on the it. screen, ladies and gentlemen. Go to Koi. That's K O I CreativeSpace dot com, and uh, come go in for a tour. It's located. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! This is gonna be bad. <laughs> oh man, I love being live, ladies. And gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, it's located at 169 Marinick Avenue, second floor, in White Plains, New York, 10601. Uh, the telephone number is 914-428-3195. Uh, and go check them out. It's it's a creative space for anybody that's an independent creative. So, you know, it, it's a creative environment that fosters growth, directly service a growing range of industries via uh, Westchester and New York City. So if you need a space to create, if you need to have a meeting, if you need to have a quiet place where you can just sit and talk or sit and create, this is the place for you. Uh, go once again, that's K O I Koi Creative Space dot com. Mention O T V at checkout or mention O T V when you go on for a tour and you get twenty percent off of your membership. So check them out. Once again, that's Koi, K-O-I, creativespace.com in White Plains, New York, on Marinick Avenue. Check them out, baby. Do it. Let's see if we can get any questions from people online. Let's see who is out there. Uh, we got four people watching the show currently. Um, Kimmy, Kimmy uh, Lawler. Uh, that's one of your people, Guzo. Hi, yeah, Kimmy. Man. Yeah, uh, she's from out of NJ. She's from New Jersey, High Bridge. Uh, originally, oh, damn, I'm, I'm just reading off Thanks everything. for watching. Yes, thank you for watching, for sure. So we got about four people that's in the chat room right now that's, that's checking us out. So definitely uh, send us a comment. If you have a question for Guzo, you got a question for me. Or if you got a question for uh, the standby gypsy over there, oh, no, making don't me ask laugh. me any questions. <laughs> <laughs> now is the time, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a few minutes left. We're going to take some live questions online right now. So uh, let's see if uh, somebody has some questions. So, Guzo, uh, are you going to be um, bartending anymore? Do you no, just left, no. That's, you uh, just left that alone. That's, that's done. Um, it was fun. Mm -hmm. um, I miss it, but I'm glad it's over. Okay, um, you just gave it up. No more slinging I the drinks. I uh, know, and and it's it's addictive, like the way um, a cigarette. You mm -hmm. know, like sometimes I get a certain tingle if I walk past the bar, and um, I, it's it's a rush. Um, it helped me in the art world because oh, you for, met a lot of people. Uh, yeah, and for a while I was just painting people. I was painting faces before I got into the whole sleep paralysis thing, mm. right? and. Uh, but uh, I met a lot of interesting people. I've seen just when I thought I saw it all, you know, when <laughs> you especially in New York City, all, right? Yeah. Just when you thought you saw it all. <laughs> like, um, Jack Lawler, well, uh, he said, what's next for Guzo? So you have the the uh, the gallery coming up. Yeah, I, uh, what's next for me? Um, and, and it's just summer's around the corner. So I'm trying to hit up as many events and shows related to art as possible. A ton of networking. I, I do want to go. My goal is to go towards um, a one-man show eventually and make more events. Mm -hmm. um, the music, um, I will enjoy it while it lasts. Uh, where it does have, intent, like I said earlier, inten intentions of, um, you know, uh, making something new and then just leaving again to go elsewhere and get inspired. Gotcha. So long story short, basically, the main focus is always going to be art and um and um i i want to make movies i like that and uh, okay I all get right into that. i have a great idea for um for a, a crazy horror film 
Um, oh boy. Yeah. So um, I think that's gonna be great. I, it's gonna be I, bourbon and pancakes. And yeah, bourbon, and bourbon and pancakes, <laughs> bourbon and titties, and pancakes, titties, and breasts. <laughs> What's up? What's up with your drummer, man? She's kind of hot. <laughs> Yo, I sound like the no, ultimate perv. I, I sound like the ultimate perv. Hey, man, what's up with your drummer, dude? She's kind of hot. <laughs> Stick with fi- that. What? Huh? No. 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 Grace is amazing. She's um, a dear, dear friend, um, and uh, she's married. Sorry, guys. Oh uh, so man, put that, put that thing away. I, I've <laughs> <laughs> put, put that down. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, she's uh, she uh, during our hiatus, she went off and did some movies, and and um, she also has a YouTube channel. Check out her YouTube ch- okay. cooking channel, um, and she does like you know in a rock and roll dress cooking. It's it's a lot yeah. of fun. Nice. All right, uh, so yeah. so so uh, tell everybody where they can uh, they can reach you. Your uh, Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram. Yeah, um, I'm on uh, Guzo Dash NYC on Instagram. But, uh, uh, underscore, right? Underscore, whatever you call it. Dash, low dash, high dash, dash and booze. Yeah. You know, <laughs> dash and pancakes, whatever. <laughs> um, on um, on Twitter, I I got some Italian name on there. It's called. Nah, Freddy got to me for my own balls. Nah. That's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I mean, it over here. Time. <laughs> over here. Over here. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, man. I, to be honest with you, I don't even know what's going on on Twitter. I feel weird. Being nah, man, it. don't worry you're about it. Yeah, listen, man, you're not missing nothing, man. There's a whole bunch of people with a lot of attitudes. Yeah. Um, you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't even have a landline, you know. Like, Yo, who, who has a landline sure. anymore, Guzo? No, my folks do. Yeah, well, man. of course. I, they're old school. The that's yeah. Nice. yeah. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, man. So my name is D Wise, and you can catch me at Mr. D Wise on uh, Twitter and Instagram. You can catch me on Snapchat. I think it's yeah, Mr. D Wise on there, too. Um, Facebook, just look me up. It's uh, uh, D Wise Music with a Z. Um, Stand by Jersey. Yes, Tell sir. everybody where, where they can catch you at. Uh, they can catch me on Instagram, and they can now catch me on Snapchat. Cause no, I just joined it. Jesus. I feel like I took 10 years off my life. I'm now getting younger. Shit, Gypsy's got a Snapchat, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. To, I'm about to turn up as the kids. Say, no, I'm just playing. But find me on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, the Stand by Gypsy. Just Google it. You'll find all the good stuff. Uh, and make sure you check out uh, Gypsy's show. Uh, Juju's about to come in here. It's oh, yeah. the Hangover Takeover. Check them out on Facebook, and they'll go live. So... Until next time, America, please stay indie.